I grew up in Pittsburgh, and a friend of mine just happened to mention he was coming to Cleveland to interview at a school. I rode along with him, and uh, that was the Cleveland Institute of Art. And when I saw the school, saw the department, industrial design department, I just fell in love with it and knew that that's what I wanted, where I wanted to go. I grew up in a little town north of Pittsburgh. When I was growing up, I wanted to design cars. So I called General Motors, because they were the biggest car company, and I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, I want to design cars, where should I go? And they said, you know what? Cleveland's not too far, and it's a great school. Why don't you go to Cleveland? So that's what yeah. I did. The first day that I was up here, I met this guy over here. At first, we were competing against each other, and we said, hey, we're killing ourselves. Why don't we just <laughs> work together, and we'll be unbeatable. If you can't beat them, join them, <laughs> and we did. <laughs> We look for opportunities in the marketplace. So we're always looking through stores and we're trying to look at what's not there. Most paint cans are metal steel cans. If you think about it, what product, they have to open with a screwdriver and close with a hammer. I mean, it's just an awful presentation to the customer. So we put together some concepts and presented it to Sherwin-Williams. They like what they saw. We put a development program together and with their help created the Twist and Pour paint container. We co-founded a company and started to make what's called the Dr. John Spin Brush. That got acquired by Procter & Gamble, so we put the Crest name on the Spin Brush and the sales jumped to 40 million units, then the next year it was 80 million mm. units, then what, 100 million? So we've seen the market go from 1% penetration to right. over a third of the people brushing electrically. There's a reason for every piece on that product. We can tell you why we put that knob there, why we put that gauge over here. It's really what separates designers from artists. Artists have the luxury of really doing anything they choose to do. The purpose is to create that piece of artwork by their own rules. Designers, by definition, have to create products that are used by millions of people. And so there has to be a basic understanding that these are acceptable and pleasing and beautifully designed by plan. And that's the difference. It becomes part of your life. So design, we sort of live. Yeah. In invention, we sort of live. We don't shut it off when we walk out of here. We just sort of, we're always thinking about new things. And by extension, the group we have here, quite often it's the only job they've ever had, including you and me, right. by the yeah. way. <laughs> Short resume. Uh, and that creativity and that camaraderie extends out to all of the talented people we have here. We have yeah. different points of view. But at the end of the day, if one doesn't want something and the other does, we probably don't do it. True. In 40 years, we haven't had a major disagreement at all. One of the mistakes I think a lot of people make are they wait too long. We started very early in our career. The mistakes we made were small mistakes, and you try to keep your mistakes small. When you have a lot to risk, you know, wife, big house, lots of kids, college, you don't want to really take risks. And that's a tough position to be in. Our risks were built incrementally, and so no one was kind of betting the farm. And that's a big issue. And I think too many people kind of maybe wait too long to try what they want to really do in this world. If one person advised us, never let one project be so large in your frame of reference that it dwarfs everything else. Really balance it out. Do a lot of things well, and they'll kind of flow. And I think that was good advice, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You don't think of one project as the relationship with a company. It's a process, and if you deliver, over-deliver. That usually comes back many, many times with additional projects in a long-term relationship. And you don't really know what's going to succeed. Nobody does. Yeah. So what you do is you try a lot of things, and you're surprised about the ones that do succeed, yeah. and the ones that don't succeed as much as you think right. they would. So you can't fall in love with any one product. But our 900 patents or so, um, Thomas Edison, for example, had, what, 1,093 right. patents. So we've got him in our sights. So we figured, what, four or five years we'll be Yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there.